Namaskaram, Vanakam and humble salutations. A warm welcome to Sadhna, the Inward Path, with me, Shurti Kapilay. The Hindu community is abuzz with activity, with the observance of Pitar Paksh already upon us and Bartasya Navaratri just around the corner. In keeping with the essence of Pitar Paksh, we join the Divine Life Society for their All Souls Day. Also in today's show, we catch up with members of the Sant Nirankari Mission of India for their historic first satsang in Durban. But before all this, we inject our show with the soul force of Shakti, an epic dance drama celebrating the divine female energy. Yes, Shakti is power, that energy within a spark that fuels us and ignites the world into action. Srimati Burushka Pata and Srimati Logambal Kaveri Soprayan, both disciples of the world-renowned Dhananjayans of Chennai, India, recently presented a dance drama, Shakti, to depict this Divine Mother's many manifestations and unconditional love, power and strength. I got interested in dance uh, when I was six years old. First, the Shakti, it is um, for, that is why we talk about it uh, for some, some time with uh, Verushka. It is, first it is uh, to dedicate to our mother Shakti. So that is the first thing. We have Bhakti for the, for the mother. Srimati Logambal Kaveri is a colleague of mine from Bharatagalanjali in India. We had both studied together at, with the Dhananjans in Chennai. Um, and her home is Reunion Island in, uh, well, an island of, of Mauritius. Uh, she's a professor of French at the university in Reunion uh, and a brilliant dancer and a phenomenal individual. I'm a scenic artist and um, got involved with the production Shakti through uh, Mrs. Varushka Pata. Uh, I met him very briefly at a program at the Playhouse and I said um, he had introduced himself and told me that he does backdrops and I said oh I have a radiant production coming up on Shakti and I have an idea and I had just sent him an email about the concept and just my thoughts and vague just ideas and until I saw the first glimpse of what she really was going to be like. Yeah, basically we, we brainstormed over the telephone and through emails and Shakti was born, the backdrop was born. And uh, it was designed from his mind, my thoughts. Uh, we were actually only the instruments. This is exactly how this radiant mother chose that she wanted to be and how she wanted to be represented. I looked, I sat down and said, what does Mother Shakti mean to me? And what you see behind you is, is what came to mind. She's powerful, she's radiant, she's divine. And I wanted to capture that. been wanting to write something on our Divine Mothers and I thought of writing it from a point of science and technology and something profound of this primordial force and I did and from my experience of fire walking and sitting in a simple temple in Stanmore in Phoenix and I watched the devotees 
And I realized when they call Shakti, they don't think of science or primordial force. They think of this real, real mother that's there to love and protect and serve. And when I saw them crying and begging for vows and, and, and boons and prayers and give thanks, I thought that's what Shakti should be about, that it should be hands-on, uh, something simple and mm -hmm. direct for everybody to uh, not just watch and understand, but have a very special experience on Shakti. We wanted to show um, each aspect of Shakti. Uh, first, uh, as a goddess, as a mother, um, we will show how a woman feel when she's very sad and how she can get anger and how she's strong, uh, so as Kanagi or as Draupadi. And also the mother, Yashoda, and how Devaki feel when she gave the child to Yashoda production. It is very similar of a contemporary. I mean, this, uh, what is the place of uh, a woman in this, this society? We have one beautiful folk item that keeps it in the style of how devotees dance in the temples of India but a very contemporary theme of, of woman, the radiance of a woman, uh, the concept that uh, adoption took place in our scriptures, that Krishna was born to Devaki and Yashoda was the chosen mother to bring him up. Uh, the concept of abuse of Kanagi, this radiant female that um, burnt Madure with her anger and uh, you know achieved the status of a deity in uh, Minakshi Madure. To show the energy how it come, from how it come, and how we can feel the energy. For example, when we got uh, the anger, so we can show, so it come from inside, and also you can see from our eyes. We wanted the traditional costume, of course, skirt costume, because Shakti, and also we wanted uh, Shakti color, red, green, and yellow. So we will be, yes, strong color. Um, so we will be in that three colors. Each and every artist have come together and they have done their 108% for Shakti. This is what is true artists, that if they've come together to serve um, our communities, to serve our art, to serve our divinity by telling the stories, it's with no price attached to it. <laughs>
समस्त लोका सुखी नो भवंतु मे ओल्ड बींग्स इन ओल्ड वर्ल्ड बी हैप्पी ज्यूरिंग दिस टाइम ऑफ पितर पक्ष फैमिलीज परफॉर्म सिंसियर प्रेयर्स फॉर द वेल बींग ऑफ द सोल्स ऑफ द डिपार्टेड लव्ड वन इन हुच एवर लोका दे मे बी The Divine Life Society also offers this observance to the community every month during their All Souls Day prayer. Sadhana join the Divine Life Society to find out more. Many years ago, uh, the master Sri Swami Sivananda had declared the first day of each month as what he called all souls day he said at that time that the souls were deeply grieved and they were suffering and it was necessary for the relatives and those who they have left behind to pray for their welfare today is a very very big day because it's a maha yajna maha meaning very big and as you can see there's like like a lot of people and um there's a big havan that's done for all the ancestors and these people as soon as they come here the reason they're doing the havan was because they feel peace and they feel that their ancestors are getting a better and good birth and they also get peace of mind as well the more prayer you do the greater uh the greater benefit it is both to to the one who's praying and to the one who is the recipient of that prayer few hours i think i can remember was just done by the ashram inmates and 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 ashram devotees and then uh, with uh, with uh, with the community wanting to be part of the hawan and it just extended to the community to be part of a mass hawan and uh, it's a kind of um you know fulfillment in doing a puja because as hindus we also like to beside our chanting we like to do the rituals as well and here's an opportunity to be part of uh, a ritual a hawan sacrifice is a very ancient form of worship it goes back to the rigvedas and hindus believe that when we offer oblations sacrifices to the fire then the gods are pleased so in this case when we offer oblations to the to the uh, to the fire during the havan ceremony we are actually pleasing the gods in order to receive the souls that are going there the family gets together and they sit around the kund and as the mantras are chanted by the officiating priest they offer to make their offerings to the kund and in their minds they pray for the peace of the soul and the mantras give purification not only to themselves but also it gives solace to the souls heart was uh, you know started by swami ji as an extension of all the gangas that we have and swami ji felt that uh, people who uh, were taking the ashes after the bodies were cremated so uh, pr ji swami ji thought that as it is done in india where the ghats are along the ganges and uh, this place was found here along the angeni river and uh, people uh, know that the ashes of their loved ones the departed loved ones are going to go in this beautiful setup as we have inside and uh, to go down to the river straight from uh, inside the ghat and uh, and that is when the all souls day started and we had to go to some isolated place near some river or the sea the scripture say to us that when the ashes of one who has passed away is disposed of in the in the river ganges that soul goes to the plain of the deities 
and uh, we are privileged that we're able to do that in South Africa. For those people who have not had the privilege of offering Ganga, of offering the ashes of their departed souls to Ganga Mata, they forged it in the descriptions also say to us that when you offer Ganga Jal in the name of a departed soul, you bring peace to that soul for a period of three years. The Ganga is known as the purifier of the world. When one takes a bath in Ganga, one is able to cleanse oneself of all past actions. In this way, when we offer the ashes of those in Ganga, we are saying that the soul has been cleansed and is able to reach the highest regions. And it is for that reason we offer our prayers to Ganga Mata. There was a time when Indians in South Africa used to drink Ganga water at the time of death. And all homes used to have Ganga water. So we have reintroduced that now, so that at the time of death, if we give Ganga water to the person who is dying, it is believed that they immediately get liberation. The Shangla God is fulfilling its primary function by providing a safe and dignified facility for the disposal of the cremated ashes for all racial groups. All I could say in one word is that you find peace as soon as you step into the God. So Samaranda has written that if you pray all by yourself, you will get benefit. But there's a large number of people who pray, then the prayer becomes very much powerful, much more powerful. And that is the meaning of satsang, it means good company, satsang. So, when we have company of a large number of people who are simultaneously praying, then the power is very much greater. And that is why when we have this very large number of people praying together, we feel confident that the prayer has been successful. Welcome back to Sadhana. The knowledge that the Supreme Being, the creator of the universe, is the highest truth is indeed the journey of all spiritual aspirants. The many and varied names and forms attributed to this being all represent an omnipresent, all-pervasive, omniscient and supreme entity, the almighty, formless one, Nirankar. We joined the Sant Nirankari mission in Durban to find out more about their philosophy and mission. If there is light in the soul, there will be beauty in the person. If there is beauty in the person, there will be harmony in the house. If there is harmony in the house, there will be order in the nation. If there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. San Nirankari Mission is a movement. Nirankar means formless. So when we say Nirankari Mission, it's a mission which makes people realize this Nirankar, this God which is omnipresent. Nirankar is another word for God. There are a lot of attributes for the God. It is called omnipresent, it is called omniscient, it is called formless, it is patient, it is calm, it is immortal, it is eternal. It is everywhere. In 1929, our past guru, Baba Bhutta Singh Ji Maharaj, was there. In 1929, he has started this mission, started delivering this gyan to everybody, whosoever may be, if anybody wants, can take it. <laughs> What mission propagates is God is everywhere and can be realized. And what mission propagates is realize as God before doing bhakti. What people have been doing in the world all over is the other way around. They do bhakti so that they can attain God, they can attain divine knowledge. 
वेर इज वट आर गुरु जी बाबा हरदेव सिंह निरंकारी बाबा हरदेव सिंह जी महाराज हैज बिन प्रीचिंग विच यू अटेन गॉड रियलाइजेशन फॉर इट यू यू अटेन दिस डिवाइन नॉलेज यू रियलाइज दिस यू सी दिस गॉड फर्स्ट एंड देन यू स्टार्ट भक्ति बिकॉज इन भक्ति देर टू थिंग्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट भगत एंड द गॉड सो द डिवोटी इन द गॉड बोथ आर रिक्वायर्ड वंस यू हैव बोथ थिंग देन ओनली यू कैन डू भक्ति एंड गॉड can be realized it's not a new phenomenon what mission is teaching if we see history raja janak got this divine knowledge from guru ashravaka arjun got this divine knowledge from bhagwan shri krishna meera got this divine knowledge from sant ravi das so saints and sages in the past have been giving this divine knowledge today again we have satguru in this world who is spreading the message of truth who is giving this divine knowledge making people realize this one father so that is what mission is propagating and what mission says once you realize this one father then the feeling of brotherhood automatically ani ram re dad re bhakti nu de jo da dayalu bhara your body man mind and material it is not yours you have not brought with you when you born these things were not with you you have collected from this world only and you think it is mine that is maya if it is not yours then why you unnecessarily worried about it leave it give it to him whose property is this this is this, it belongs to almighty god ho raat divas ek taare dhune ho ek taare our main uh, agenda which we propagate is unity in diversity so baba ji is preaching unity in diversity there is one link which is common in all of us and that is the atma the soul which is part of the super soul which is part of this paramatma vasudev kutumkum the whole world is one family it doesn't matter whether you are a hindu or a muslim or a christian or a sikh or any other religion i mean it doesn't matter whether you are black or white god is one we are all children of one father so many paths all with the same goal as quoted by nirankari baba ji families who pray together stay together Spiritualism does not mean self-denial or running away from things but being aware of them and realizing God. We wish you and your families well over this auspicious period of penance and prayer. Until next time, Hari Om.